create a folder on your external hard drive for your media. So for me, I have a folder within my video folder. See, here's my external hard drive. Within that is the video folder. And I've created this folder called Remix Project. Within that, I have my found footage, approximately 25 different clips uh, that I had you, that I suggested that you collect. And then I have a separate folder for audio, which has an assortment of both music and um, different kind of sound effects. Then I want you to create this folder called exports. And you're gonna leave that empty now. That's gonna be for when you export your media, it will go in here. Okay, next thing, open up Premiere Pro. Um, whatever is the most recent version on your computer. For me, this is Premiere Pro 2020. This takes a minute to open up. So from here, you want to start a new project. You can click here, new project, or down here, create new project. I'm gonna click here and it's asking me to name the project and asking where the project should go. And this is really kind of the important thing here. So I'm gonna name this demo, demo reel. And then I'm gonna place this, click browse, and then find your, your folder where you have the found footage and where you have your found audio. For me, that's this folder, Remix Project. Don't go any further in into the folder hierarchy. Just click on the main folder here and then click choose. And then OK. So here is our Premiere Pro interface. And as you can see, it's completely blank right now. But one, I, something I want to draw your attention to is that the default opens within this editing uh, tab editing be, being one of the top um, sort of workspaces that Premiere creates. This is where you want to start. It's, it's a good place to start. So let's go into here, uh, which is our media window. This is the first thing we need to do is to import some media. So I'm going to double click here and it's going to ask me what I want to import. And you can also see that up here, uh, in the window that's just opened, my demo re reel project has saved to this folder. So that is really good so far. I want to import both of these two folders. So I'm gonna hold down shift, click on both of them and import. And it'll take a minute. You can do that one at a time, but it's more efficient if you already have all your files together to import them all at once like this. First, let's check and see that their files are here. If we click on this down arrow, we can see all of those video files are in there and it included some extra um, bins within the main folder um, that I had created. And so let's close that found footage up and check out our audio. That all looks good. Um, different types of files create different kinds of icons over here, MP4 versus WAV. The MP4 is actually a video file that I will have to, that I want to use just for the audio, but I'm going to have to separate those, which I'll show you how to do. So the next thing is click into this box because you want your uh, sequence file to go to stay in this uh, file hierarchy. You don't want it to be within your found footage or within your audio. So click back out to this main space here. Go up to File, New, Sequence. And then a kind of dizzying array of options appears here. The, your sequence could be in any one of these types. And just to give you a sense of what this all means for the different presets is you're telling, you're telling Premiere Pro what size you want your sequence to be. In this case, this is 1920 pixels 
by 1080 pixels, which is a pretty standard HD file type. It's a ratio, aspect ratio of 16 to 9, which is, that's what your standard screen is on your laptop and a standard widescreen TV, or I shouldn't even say widescreen, like normal TV, flat screen TV is a 16.9. So that is something we want. Well, let's say a lot of these are really specialized. So the one that I think it's best for us to use is within this folder. It says digital SLR. Many of you are going to be shooting, once we start shooting for this class, are going to be shooting with a digital single lens reflex. So let's open this up. We're using found footage for this. So in this case, I want to use this size, the 720, um, which is also HD, but it's a smaller HD. And so most of the things that you're pulling off the internet is this size, um, which is, I'm going to open this up. Um, and we can see what this says. It's 1280 by 720. The frames per second is rather slow. It's 23.976 seconds. The reason I'm choosing the slowest frames per second is because that's often what you'll be downloading from the internet. If you go in and look at your, your, the different footage that you've downloaded, under here you'll see the frame rate in this case is 23.98. That's pretty similar to what we set the sequence settings for, which was 23.976. In fact, this is probably just a rounding up. Then we have some frame rates that are 24 exactly, some that are 25, some that are 29, some that are almost, that are 30 here essentially, 29.9. Click on that and you will see that this frame of the workspace has now populated. This is your timeline. Some of you are going to be very familiar with this from foundations and so this will be just review. But for anybody who's new to it, I just want to orient you a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is going to name this demo one or demo draft one. And now we begin to pull in some footage. The first footage I'm going to pull in is this drumming footage because uh, I know I want this to be a major component. I'm just going to drag this over, click on it, whoops, let's do that again. Click on it, drag it in, and you'll see it's going to ask me, do you want to change the sequence settings? That's the thing we just set. Do we want to change that to match the clip settings? No, in this case we do not, so keep existing settings. You can see that the footage itself is some folks um, playing bucket drums in a subway station. The first thing I'm going to do with this, because I'm not intending to use this video, is I just want to keep it for the audio. So here I click on, click on control and click on this, this same time and this drop down menu appears or right hand menu and I want to go to unlink. This allows the audio to unlink from the video. Here I'm going to select the video and click delete. So now I'm just left with that audio. I'm going to similarly drag this over and I didn't want to put it right on top of the drumming because it might uh, do you see how it's overlapping with the drumming? And that means that basically it, it's cutting the space of the drumming. So for now, I want to put it right next door to the drumming. First of all, we notice that this is a much smaller video than our sequence setting. The sequence is the whole black box. That's the 12, 1280 pixels on this side and 720 pixels on this side. And even before I start editing it, I'd like to enlarge it so that I can actually see what I'm doing. So I have this selected. Now I go up here into this window, which we haven't used yet, and click on Effects Controls. And what I want to do here is enlarge the scale of this video. So I clicked on this down arrow which is, this is the easiest way to use scale, and I'm going to push that up. 
and you can see that I pushed it all the way to the end of the scale and it's still not big enough. So in this case, I'm gonna go into the actual numeric value. We've doubled the size here, but we need to go even bigger. Yes. Similarly, with this video, the audio is not something that I want. And then unlink. And in this case, I'm not removing the video, I'm just removing the audio. Now I do want to select just a short part of this, so I'd like to zoom in on it. The way that we can zoom in in Premiere is using this bar down here. And if you close the bar, sort of taking one of these two ends and pushing it together, it enlarges your timeline. Yay. I'm going to go over here and make my first cut, grab the razor tool, or you can just click C. And I'm going to make my first cut here and remove that font, the text that was the overlay there, and keep zooming along my timeline. Razor tool again and delete that. Return to my previous view and maybe put the fox over some of the drumming for here for right now. Then I'm just going to continue doing this with other footage that I'm interested in. Salad tossing, for example, we notice um, in this case I wanted to show you this. The other thing I wanted to show you in here is the size of our different footage. This is the size that we went for for our actual sequence, 1280 by 720. And you can see up here that this woman um, is perfectly framed and we did not have to scale this particular at all. We have a couple more that are 1280 by 720. Each of these stands for the amount of pixels in terms of length versus height. Length always comes first. You can see that I can move these different windows around. I can also make the um, viewing space larger up here by pulling this whole thing down. And then you can actually use your selection tool to highlight this empty space, delete that, and it brings these two clips together. So that's a little shortcut for getting rid of some additional space. Um, now these audio and video clips are still linked. So when I grab this, video, the audio comes with it. And that's good. I want those to stay synced at this point. Now, let's say you have a finished draft of your video. In my case, uh, edited from both sides. So maybe the first thing I want to do is delete this space so that my entire video goes back to the zero point on the timeline. So I'm going to select that area and delete. And then you can see that the running time for my video is 55, sec 55 seconds and 18 frames. Your videos are going to be longer than this, of course. I noticed that I have a bunch of yellow up here and you might have yellow or red. And what that means is you need to render this video before you export it for optimal quality. My selection tool is over here at the end point. I'm going to click O for out and bring it over here and select I for in. So what I'm doing is telling my Premiere Pro project that I want to render from here to here, which is where all my yellow is. For you, you might have to render the whole thing, in which case you bring your selection tool all the way to the beginning, and that's where you select I. Then you go up here to Sequence, and down here to Render In to Out. So that might take a couple of minutes, depending on how long your video is. Here's where I'm going to show you guys how to export. So you go up here and then you do the file menu, export, media. A little pop-up menu will show up. And there's a couple of things I want you to look for. Um, for one thing, your format is super important. So you want to click this H264. You want to be looking under this menu to specify like at what quality you want it to export for. 
And for us, because we're exporting specifically for YouTube, you can come all the way down here, um, past the Vimeo, all the way to YouTube. And for us, because this particular video is 1280 by 720, this is the one we want to choose. Later in the semester, when we're shooting uh, full HD, we want to come up and choose this one. Then we just want to make sure we know where this is going. Where is this draft going? And this is the name of the draft. And here you could change this. Um, say you want to call it demo real export one. And then you tell it where you want it to, to export to. And in my case, I want it to go to let's open this window up so we can really see what we're doing um, let's go under video because I want it to export to my exports folder so it's demo reel and then right now I don't have an exports folder my bad you should create one if you don't have one already here you hit save you can check your settings within here. Um, here you notice it does say 1280 by 720. That's good. And it will also tell you where it's saving to. Video, demo, reel, exports, and then the name of the file. Now down here, instead of hitting Q, which is what is highlighted for you, I want you to click export because that immediately sends it to export right at this time. If you hit Q, it's going to wait until you at some later point tell it to export. And this should take a few minutes. The longer your video is, the longer it will take to export. So in later projects, be sure to allow yourself maybe half an hour uh, for the video to export.